this. I'm really excited to see this Pokemon trainer. I have been personally spending a lot of time with the character. I think that there's so much potential with the uh, with the switching. It's finally frame one invincible, and the ability to just be so dynamic in the middle of a match, you know, mix up your opponent, it's something that is going to, over time, just be, I think, really put a high ceiling on the character. Yeah, there's a lot that needs to be learned with this character, not just fi uh, fighting as Pokemon Trainer, but fighting the Pokemon Trainer themselves, because it's like, you need to know what's going on throughout a match, how to fight Squirtle, Ivysaur, and Charizard, and how to change your game plan appropriately. And then, if you change your game plan appropriately, sometimes the game plan works against the player themselves, not just the character. Yeah, so. and I mean, so, it's also really cool how each of the Pokemon have sort of occupied a different archetype. Ivysaur is more of a zoner. Uh, Squirtle, very fast, almost chic-esque in that he is fast, has great combos, but kind of struggles to kill. Um, and then there's Charizard, the big, heavy, like, well, not necessarily last ditch, but definitely has the most consistent kill power. Ooh, I love the, just not getting the uh, actual knockdown uh, from that. And forward air will take the stock. And he's going to be staying in this form because Charizard being the heaviest allows for the most survivability. Uh, Squirtle very light, and Ivysaur not particularly heavy either. Yeah, unfortunately, survivability is just sort of going to be in the hands of the player instead of just the characters themselves in this matchup. One interesting note about Inkling is that even if the Pokemon Trainer swaps between the Pokemon, Ink still stays on them to the same degree of charge. So, John still has a lot of potential for putting out plenty of pressure. No matter if he's pressuring Squirtle, Ivysaur, Charizard, it doesn't matter. They're all finding the business end of that blaster. Yeah, and one thing is that Squirtle's uh, overall his ledge trapping is really good. His movement is probably the best of the three. He's able to dash dance in and out. Uh, really good grab, um, especially his roll boost grab goes so far. Um, and Ivysaur, Ivysaur has, interest, has the most interesting combos, I'd say. Uh, short hop, uh, Razor Leaf is kind of ridiculous. Mash, bro, mash. <laughs> He's got no ink. It would have been a lot, more, a lot better if he had some ink, but... John opting just to charge a little bit of it, just enough so he can use a splat bomb. But he's found himself at disadvantage once again. Ivysaur does such a great job of covering that air pressure too because of a lot of ways to kill, but Inkling is at no shortage. And we're seeing the Charizard come out. He is not going to be... <laughs> I, all right. Good, good call. That's all you need, man. You get plenty of damage on as long as you get your Charizard to nab the kill. You could start fresh with Squirtle as though it's a brand new game. <gasps> oh, okay, one thing about the Pokemon trainers is that the character, their recoveries are pretty good, but they don't necessarily go that far. And so if you get hit offstage, especially by a character like Inkling, who can go deep, who can put on a lot of that offstage pressure, sometimes you just, your life evaporates, gets uh, squashed. It's also a very grim story for Squirtle returning to stage. Um, it's, it's a little known secret where you could footstool withdraw. And if you do, Squirtle lays helpless. Wait, this in the side beam? Yes, you could footstool that. And it is terrifying for Squirtle. Squirtle wiggles helplessly. <laughs> he either just falls into free fall or just lays there on the ground waiting for you to do something. So you're saying I can never main a character that doesn't get footstooled off stage and I just die. Sucks to be you. <sighs> but Bankai's been managing quite well. He's been playing uh, majorly... Ivysaur for this. And I agree with the idea, just because Ivysaur is a little bit more aggressive with its zoning tools than other characters in the game. But also, Whoa. no damage for racking up damage. And that's what I'm talking about with the switching, that like, this pivot. You know, because when you were playing against a character, you're mindful of their options. What options will kill at this point? What should I be careful of? And when there's that transition just happening so quickly, just change it to Charizard, you're probably not ready for that falling affair to be ending him. And now, John is giving a bit of a shrug as he moves on into game two. He's going to be sticking with Inkling, most likely. Uh, maybe he's going to be changing the music, though? Yeah, I, I don't see him switching off of Inkling anytime soon. I don't know if he's, he's been very excited for playing Inkling. And knowing John, I'm almost certain he's been ladding stuff nonstop with his character for understanding how to use their tools. And there's a lot of tools to make use of. Inkling's been seeing a lot of usage, in, in, I would say, in Tri-State, not just New York. As far as like when the game came out, I mean, everyone's like there was around. Uh, there was somebody who won a New Jersey uh, showcase tournament with Inkling. I believe it was Wishes. Yes, it was Wishes. AKA Vivid, AKA Justy, AKA whatever his name is this month. Oh, that's Vivid. Yeah. Ah. Still the same good player, just different name, different character. I've been considering getting a name change for Ultimate. It's never too late, I guess. Uh -huh. 
speaking of changes, the change of setting, I think, is actually a really good one uh, into... Uh, actually, I think this is Bankai's favor as far as the stage goes. Honestly, I think the Pokemon trainers can make the most use of uh, the dual platforms. Although, as long as John stays evasive, I, I would see this being like, a little bit more reasonable for his stage pick. Oh, oh no. Oh, okay, here's the thing. Like, we have been like, like talking about, oh, Ivysaur seems to be doing really well in terms of zoning. Oh, Squirtle has this speed. He's been getting so much mileage with Charizard. I feel like all of these kills have just been like, Charizard just needs to hit. He, he just needs to slap you when you explode. Not much has changed in that Did regard. Do it? No. Forward. Oh, what? <laughs> Almost had it. See, doesn't that feel unsatisfying when you're like, oh, no, he lived, and you're like, oh, I guess he died. <laughs> we still got two stocks to go. John's still got plenty of time. Ooh. Back air is so clean from Ivysaur. Uh, and also, uh, forward air auto cancels out of a short hop. And you can, like, fast fall it to get some combos. Ivysaur is the character where, like, Squirtle, his combos are, like, kind of straightforward of, like, okay, this thing links into this thing. But Ivysaur, it's like, okay, like, these moves have, like, very particular range and hitboxes. To the point where it's, like, sort of unique the way that he actually gets his combos. Is that going to do it? Nah, finisher from Jeb is pretty solid, but it's not, like, no move. Forward air, though, that'll... That'll get it. Especially when he's inked up so much. Why is he playing male Pokemon trainer? What is wrong with him? There's nothing wrong with it. Maybe he just wants the Pokemon in their classic colors. I mean, if we're asking ridiculous questions, why is John using the girl ink It doesn't matter. <laughs> if anything, like, imagine him playing, like, male Wii Fit trainer. You know that it'd be weird. That'd be weird for John. So he's playing Girl Inkling. Yes. This is just a chain of oddities. What really matters is the fact that John is struggling to get back to the ledge. This Charizard That's really seems to have his number. Yeah. Didn't numbers have a Charizard? Is it like like well, you don't want to? We don't really talk about <laughs> what that. What are you talking about? We, we do not talk about that. Because mm. right now the only Charizard we have to care about is Bankai's because he's been putting in the work with this trainer. Oh, but there is another stock being dropped. He's opting to switch immediately to the Squirtle. Uh, yeah, you don't want to kind of have to, like Charizard at zero, he has some low percent throw combos, but on the whole, you want to be playing a character with a fast, aggressive neutral like Squirtle, just to rack up that percent quickly, to maybe go to Ivysaur to rack up even more damage and zone him more effectively, and then Charizard to the finish. That seems to be, you know, at least for this game too, what's been working most effectively. Seeing a lot more withdraw use from Bankai, and I actually like it just because it's free damage. He can't get damage while he's in the shell, and it does a fair amount of percentage on its own right. So it does a good job for at least marking up where this battle is going to take place. And I've sort of <gasps> been on the heavier end of things, but not heavy enough to survive that. We're going to be going to a game three. What's that game? Wait, who won game one? Bankai. Oh, I Bankai won game one. Remember Char Charizard explodes? Yeah. You, you, I do. you explode too, but you don't come back. That's that's how that character works. <laughs> All right, we're going to be having this uh, Smash Bros. We have no DSR in New York, right? Oh, good. In, right. in this house? <laughs> Never! Also, I love the fact that now you select stage before you select characters. It was such like, it's, it's just an important now. I've always thought it was one of the biggest changes with this game. But if you've got someone who's going to be solo main, it doesn't really impact too heavily. We'll see along the way. But either way, Game 3 is bringing us back to Smashville, like we mentioned. There is no DSR here for Xeno, so you get this double dosage of uh, Smashville action. And plenty of the Squirtle work. This girl's forward air is so nice. It's Diddy Kong forward air, basically. It, it is. I've been calling it Dollar Store Diddy Kong there. I mean, here's the thing. It is, yes, not maybe the same hitbox. But the fact that uh, Squirtle has more speed overall, like especially in the air, Diddy Kong always was kind of a slow boy in the air. Not the so with Squirtle, so he's able to like maneuver around even better than Diddy Kong did. Oh, he's gonna be able to side B again. Yeah, he makes yeah. it back to stage just fine. That's one of the really cool advantages of switching and having these different characters with different kinds of recovery that you have to adapt and edge guard in different ways. 
no 60 frame uh, rule in this game, right? Like you can re grab the ledge. You don't have to wait like 60 frames, correct? Um, not that I know. I, I know there there is like a uh, like a hard grab limit on re grabbing. Like eventually your character just can, but that is neither here nor there. I don't. I, I, as as much as we joke about John having been campy in the past, it does not look like that's going to be his uh, his foray with Inkling. He's been a lot more aggressive than what we usually know him for, and I think it just feel, fits more to uh, Inkling's play style. That should be it. What? Back throw would have done it at that point. Treasure's back throw is silly. It's strong, but it's actually weaker than Ivy Sword and Squirtles. Their back throws like Ivy. So Squirtle has like no kill power except for his back air. Back throw, rather. His back throw is too strong. <gasps> oh, we, we, we living. I don't know for how long, though. Oh my god, switching to the lightest boy there is. But with extra speed, you know, all he needs is a little bit of chip damage, but no chip damage will he get. Uh, I want to believe this is actually piece. part of Bankai's game plan, so at least start the next stock as Ivy Sword. Uh, considering, oh no, he did that defensively. Yes, you can switch from Pokemon in the air, and it's used. It's mainly good for being used Ooh. to uh, just drop out of combos. And I, that was very messy off the ledge. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, although it is also really good for landing because it does not use up the air dodge. So uh, it's basically a defensive tool that is exclusive to Pokemon Trainer. Let's bayonetta ask. Wow. That was cute. Using Vine Whip to stall in the air with Ivysaur. Get a, like a little bit of uh, aerial stall as well. And not only that, like, John sees the... Uh, <laughs> John sees the Ivysaur and has to start changing his game plan to how he's going to, you know, edgeguard an Ivysaur, and then he goes high with Charizard. You just... That... All right, all right. So, so the Splat Roller leaves a bit of ink on the ground, as I'm sure many people have noticed. Characters that aren't that inkling are slowed down a tiny bit on that. I think that's having a dramatic effect on the side B from Charizard because we've seen it almost like shorten, similar to like a Fox or Falco side B in Melee, and it's really funny. <laughs> I wonder if it actually could have utility in that, the same way that Shorten did in uh, Melee. I mean, if Charizard could do it off of Ink, then yeah. Otherwise, this is a very matchup specific piece of tech. Well, if Inkling ends up being as uh, meta defining as at the Current moment, it seems like she is going to be. Uh, that might be the story. Oh, he has his jumps. No, he doesn't. And that's going to be John Numbers for, uh, busting out a character that's not Wii Fit and <laughs> looking pretty good with it. It was a very messy end to game three, but John stayed stalwart with all of his edge guarding. He tried to go for the dunks, but honestly, him just constantly going for forward air and forward air and forward air is all you really needed to do, just exhausting a lot of the percentage and whatnot. So, 2-0.